yesterday our discussion on acids and bases took us to the strength of the acid or the strength of the base. Now, just as a quick review, who can tell us what was dependent on the strength of the acid? What did it depend on? Yes, indirectly, okay? Because the strength of the pH, and what I mean by that, you're going to learn today about pH, and the strength of the pH is based on the hydrogen ion concentration. So that's not, Joe, that's not a totally incorrect statement. But when we were talking yesterday about strength of acid, it was based on what? Should have been one of your early things that you wrote down. I had it up at the top where this says pH up here. It was in red up at the top. Strength equals dissociation. Okay? Strength equals dissociation. So how much that particular acid or that particular base dissociates helps to determine what the strength of that acid or base is. We talked about hydrochloric acid, which almost 100% dissociates in water. That would be a very strong acid. We discussed acetic acid which only dissociates about 1%, so that would be a weaker acid. And then finally, yesterday, we discussed the acid dissociation constant, and we worked an example of that. We will work more examples of acid dissociation constant next week. Okay, I know I've got a few of those set up to be worked, I think, on Monday. And we'll probably have an entrance slip somewhere along the lines. We talked about acid-base indicators also when we did properties. I think I scheduled that lab for next week also. Now, the pH concept. If I can imagine, probably what you've done with pH is you've taken pH paper, you've dipped it into the substance, you've compared it to a color diagram, and you said, ah, uh, this is pH 3. Okay, have you ever done a pH calculation? Okay, have you ever measured the hydrogen ion concentration? Okay, those are some things that we will be doing before too long, and you will be able to convert back and forth between the two. So our objectives today would be to learn about the pH concept. What actually is the pH? Okay, we know it helps determine the strength of the acid or the strength of the base. But what actually is it? What is it a measurement of? And finally, by the time we end our discussion on pH, you should be able to do conversions. You've probably never heard of the pOH, have you? Okay. You've probably never heard of the pOH. Well, you'll learn that. It goes hand in hand with the pH. So, the pH scale. Let's get on the pH scale. It was proposed by a gentleman named Soren Sorensen. Soren Sorensen. Kind of crazy name. I don't know. 
not very creative, I don't think, for his parents, but nonetheless, nonetheless. He was a Danish chemist. Bless you. We came up here. We came up, not really we, Sorensen came up with the pH scale, and he said that 7 was neutral. Anything greater than 7 was a base. Anything less than 7 was an acid. Greater than seven base, less than seven acid, exactly seven is a neutral solution. If it's 7.01, what do you think? It's basic, but is it very basic? No. Okay, it's very, very close to neutral, but can we say that it's 100% neutral? No. No. In theory, what should be 100% neutral? Distilled water. Because Can we say water? Because what, what about tap water? Don't we put stuff in it? Okay, so I would say tap water, if we would measure it, would not be neutral. Now, if you look here, here is a diagram. Okay, a pH is a measure of the acidity. Okay. You're going to see later on why we call it a measure of the acidity because if you look, 1 times 10 to the minus 14 molar hydrogen ion right here. So that's a very, very, very small number, isn't it? So that does not have very many hydrogen ions in it. Now when I move my little guy down here, Let's just look at one here. A pH of one has a one times 10 to the negative one hydrogen ion. So that's 0.1. So that's significantly greater than the one times 10 to the minus 14. Yes. I don't think it would matter. See, that's a common misconception that people have. And they think that acids are really, really bad, but that bases are not. A, a 14 base can do as much damage as a one acid. Okay? It just has got different things. Different things in it. All right? Yeah. These? This is just showing you, okay, that pH is what we call a logarithmic scale, okay? A logarithmic scale. Have you guys done, dealt with logarithms? Okay. Well, you can say, hey, pH, it's logarithmic. What does it mean, logarithmic? Okay. Most of the times, like if we were doing a measurement and we were looking at increments, we would say, you know, one, two, three, four, five, right? Well, if I look at pH 7, okay, pH 7, pH 6, how do they compare? Well, pH 6 is 10 times greater than pH 7. pH 5 is 10 times greater than pH 6. So it's based on 10s 
not on ones. Okay? So if I would look and I'd say, okay, how would 7 and 5 rate? Well, that's two tens, which is 100. Right? So pH 5 would be 100 times stronger than pH 7. All right? So those are what those numbers are. The logarithmic scale that pH is based on. Okay? So if you look at that, there we have the numbers. And these actually, these colors will actually line up to what universal indicator is. And universal indicator is the one that we use in pH paper. Okay, they just take paper and they dip it into universal indicator. And that's how we get the pH. Now if you look at this, okay, if you look at this, here are some common acids and bases that have those specific pHs, okay? Pure water, distilled water, okay? Milk is slightly acidic, okay? Licked it. Battery acid, I surely, Right, you take the battery, you're just, no, no, no. You're talking about taking a 9-volt battery and licking it to see if it has charge in it yet. All you're doing is connecting the circuit there, okay? I'm telling you right now that many years ago, okay, many years ago, my boat got wrecked. I was pulling it in my car or in my truck, okay? Somebody hit us, flipped my boat upside down. All right? That was my bass boat. I wasn't very happy. It was my bass boat. We were heading to Canada. Okay? You know where I got hit? On Habman Road, right by Walmart. So I made it not even out of Salina on my trip to Canada. Okay? But nonetheless, I was taking my battery out of my destroyed boat because I thought my battery still could be good. Well, my battery got beat up too and it was leaky okay I didn't know this and I put it into my vehicle and later on my pants that I had on I had shorts on I would say within a half hour I had holes all over my shorts from the battery acid eating all the way through my clothes and I had little welts on my skin that were red because it was reacting and burning my skin. Okay, so that battery acid, you don't want to lick. I'm guaranteeing. All right. Right, no. Battery acid, no. You, you don't want to do that. Tomato juice, you know, we talked about right here. You look. Lemon juice. Okay, a 2.3. So you've actually had... If you've had lemon juice that comes in a little green bottle that you could pour out, I mean, that's pretty acidic. You know, I know I dump vinegar on my french fries when I'm at the fair. Okay, that's a 2.9 there. So, you've had some of these. Your stomach is lined so that the hydrochloric acid that breaks down the food does not react with the lining of your stomach. If it does, you know what that is? You ever heard of an ulcer? Okay. An ulcer is a breakdown in that lining of the stomach, and the acid comes in contact with the wall of the stomach. Okay. It could cause bleeding. Okay. Ulcers, yeah, not something I would like to have. If you brushed your teeth this morning, you had a base in your mouth, the toothpaste, okay? Milk of magnesia, soapy water, you know, soap. Soap is a base. So when you have soapy water, you're dealing with the base. I'm sure you've come into contact one time or another with some bleach, all right? 
So those are acids, those are bases that we can see quite frequently. Now, we're going to, the big thing I want today is you're going to see a bunch of these equations in red. You need to get those down. You won't understand them, so to speak, okay? You won't know how to convert from one to the other yet, but we're going to get the background. Once we get the background, then we will run in and deal with actual examples of these. So let's get the background down, and then we'll move on with working some. Maybe it'll be today. Definitely will be on Monday. The very first is the equation here listed for pH. How I read this is pH, remember lowercase p, capital H, is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Remember, when we put those brackets around it, it is the concentration of. So literally, the concentration of hydrogen ion is in the bracket there. So to calculate the pH, one way could be to take the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. I told you you'd be introduced to this guy, the pOH. The pOH. Well, what is the pOH? It is the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. If you remember back to Arrhenius, Arrhenius said that acids, when they dissociated, had hydrogen ions. Arrhenius also said that bases, when they dissociated, had hydroxide ions. Okay, so this sort of lines up with Arrhenius, although he was not totally correct. It lines up a little bit with his thinking of acids and bases. So the pOH is the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. Well, we know that the pH scale, we just saw, went from 0 to 14, right? Went from 0 to 14. So if I take the pH and add to it the pOH, I will get 14. So if I add those two numbers together, I can get 14. So this should be a very easy one. If you would have the pH of a substance, how could you figure out the pOH? Okay, take 14 and subtract that number. So this will be one of the easier calculations that you'll have. That is what's used to calculate it, absolutely. Okay? It is not the concentration of, it is used to calculate it. Because you're going to see pHs are like numbers of 2, pH 14, and you're going to see hydrogen ion concentration and hydroxide ion concentration are molality or molarities. Okay? So those will have a certain molarity of the concentrations that we will use to convert to pH. So don't think that pH is a concentration, okay? It's just a measurement that we've determined from a concentration. I guess they aren't all in red because here's one that is in blue. My bad. 
I don't know what I was thinking. I lost my head. KW. KW is the ion product constant for water. What is a constant? It's the same. So KW is always what? The same, and that value is what? 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. KW is equal to the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration. So if you multiply the hydrogen ion concentration by the hydroxide ion concentration, you should get 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Now, I guess I'm going to throw some examples at you now. I'm going to throw some examples at you. Go ahead and copy down this example, and then we'll work it. Now, I don't know why we start, why I put this example in there, okay? Because this deals with a couple of different parts. This is a two-step thing that you'll need to do. Once again, I'm not worried yet about you being able to do these calculations. They're not tough calculations, but it always seems to me that throughout the years, and I've been teaching chemistry for, believe it or not, 20-some years. Okay, So this isn't my first rodeo, but throughout the years, Students struggle with these calculations, and I don't know why, because I don't think they're terribly tough. It's a lot of calculator work and a lot of solving for unknowns, okay? But I don't think they're tough. Now, if I look at this right here, you might, on initial appearance, say, okay, I've got three things here, okay? And maybe that's one of the tougher things. Maybe the tough thing is picking out what equations that I need to use to get where. Because you could use more than one. You could do this in a couple of different ways. What I like to call, you know, like to say there's more than one way to skin a cat. Okay? Which I've never skinned a cat. I don't know. I've never done that. But I'm telling you, there's multiple ways you can do things. Now, with this one... On first appearance, you might look at this and say, I don't have enough information. Okay, but you do. Because you know what KW is, don't you? We just discussed that. KW is 1.0 times 10 to negative 14th, right? So that is equal to the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration, which is what? So now I've got that. That's an easy one, isn't it? That's easy to do now. I divide both sides by 4.0 times 10 minus 11 divided by 4.0 times 10 minus 11. So my hydrogen ion concentration is going to be equal to 
times 10 to the minus 4, right? When I did my division, that's what I came out with. But that's not what they're asking me, are they? They didn't want the hydrogen ion concentration. And you might be saying, all right, Braun, why did you do that? Why did you do that? Why did you even do this step? Well, I'm going to use the hydrogen ion concentration to do the pH. Remember, I just gave you an equation that said pH is what? The negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, right? So, so if I take pH is equal to the negative log of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4. Now, depending on what kind of calculator you have, depends on what you need to do in order to do this. But this is just the calculator move right here. Now, how I do mine is you need to find your log button on your calculator. So find your log button on your calculator. If you don't have a calculator here, why don't you? Okay, we always do a lot of math in here. So find your log button. If you cannot find it, ask me. Mine is the number, or the not, not the number, the button to the left of my seven. Okay, now it is just this simple to calculate the pH. I hit the, not the minus sign, the negative sign. Not the minus sign, the negative sign. Is there a difference? Yes. To your calculator, absolutely. So I hit the negative, then I hit my log button and it makes a parenthesis for me. And then I put 2.5 to the negative fourth power. I close my parentheses and I execute. Once I hit enter, it spits out a value for me. And in this case, it spit out 3.6026. I'm just going to round it there. Okay. So it spit out that value for me. Now, sig figs here, folks, I've got a separate slide that we're going to deal with on sig figs coming up here. So don't worry about sig figs right now. We will sig fig this one a little bit later. Maybe it is. Maybe I missed a number there. Okay. Could be. Kyle says I missed a number that I should have. Yep, I did. I missed a number. There should be a zero right there. So it should be 3.60206. Okay. But when I walked you through that, was that very tough? No. That was a calculator action, wasn't it? All right. Oh, it's not quite. It gets a little tougher than that, Kyle. Okay. But yeah, that's all you have to do to get from hydrogen ion to pH. Absolutely. Here's another equation. And probably what I should do is I should take that example out there. I didn't know I had an example that close in. We don't really need to be doing examples before we get all of the stuff down. So I'll probably bump that back in my slideshow. But we need to go the other way. We know that the pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Well, what if I need to find the hydrogen ion concentration? Well, it is the anti-log of the negative pH. There will be. Don't worry about it. Okay, Kyle asked, is there a button for that? Okay. Yes, there is a button for that. But we will learn that button for that at a later time. 
Now here is an important one. I'm going to pause the recording here because we're not going to talk about this until you have this written down. Okay, so go ahead and type out or write out this entire slide because sig figs are different using logs. Now, if we look through this, okay, if we look through this, I have at the top there, it says pH is equal to 7.27. Now, with logarithms, you count the number of figures after the decimal point. So as I am looking at 7.27, how many figures are behind the decimal? Two. There's a two and there's a seven. So that would tell me that there are two significant figures because I know that pHs are logarithms. Now where it's different is, look at this number. Is this a logarithm? It is not a pH, it's the hydrogen ion concentration. So it is not a logarithm. So how many sig figs do I have here? Three, that's just normal. Okay, so if I'm taking, go ahead and take the negative log of 2.11 times 10 to the negative 14th and see if you can get that number, the 13.67571754. See if you can get that number. Did you? Now, if I look at this, I'm taking, I have the negative log of this value. We just said that this has one, two, three sig figs, right? So my pH must have three sig figs. Remember, that I only count for sig figs on pHs, pOHs after the decimal point. So I need three digits after the decimal point. So do my one and my three count? No. Okay. What counts is six, seven, five is my third one. So I need to see if that 5 rounds up or stays at 5. For a logarithm number like the pH or the pOH. Okay? So I look at this. Does that 7 cause that 5 to round up? Absolutely. So my number, sig fig wise, is 13.6. Seven, five. Now, you know how people screw this up? Look at this value here. You know what they want to do? They want to count this as two sig figs because there's only two numbers after the decimal. Okay? That number is not a logarithm. Remember, pH scales are based on the power of 10, right? I told you, 7 was 10 times weaker than what 6 is. It was 100 times weaker than what 5 was. It would be 1,000 times weaker than what 4 is. Okay, So that is why, since those are on logarithms, that we need to use a different method for determining the pH.